Hey guys, this is going to be part one of a part of a six-part series on combinatorics. Today I'm going to go over some definitions of combinations and permutations, and we'll look at how to solve some problems using those. So first we'll discuss the permutation. Suppose we have three objects labeled A, B, and C. Now, how many ways are there to arrange these objects? Well, we could flip the C and the B, like so. And notice that these are the only two ways that we can arrange the objects if A is the first object. So let's say A is the second object. Then there's also going to be two, two ways to organize the B and the C. We could have the B and C here, or we could have the C there and the B there. And lastly, we have the A in the last spot. So we have A, we could have BC, or we could have CB and A. So this is, there are six ways to organize the three objects. And this is represented symbolically by three with an exclamation mark. And we read this as three factorial equals six. So a factorial counts the number of ways to arrange in distinct objects. And we can see sort of recursively that n factorial is equal to n times n minus one factorial. And I sort of use that in this example to guide our counting because we had three places to put our A and then we organized the two other objects. In other words, we had n places to put the A and n minus one places n minus one factorial ways to arrange the numbers. So we have this recursion and so we can see because six is equal to three times two times one or, you know, we also have one factorial is equal to one, then we know that n factorial is equal to n times n minus one times n minus two, whoops, n minus two, dot, 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 all the way times two and times one. So it's the sum of all the positive integers less than or equal to n. Now suppose that we have um, three objects. How many ways can we pick two of these objects, but the order matters in which we pick them? In other words, let's say A, B, and C are three people competing in a race. How many ways can, or actually, you know, I'm going to make it a four-person race. How many ways can we have a first-place winner and a second-place winner? Well, think of it this way. There are four ways to pick who's going to be first. Let's say C is first. And then now C can't be second because he's already first. So out of these three people, we have three choices. Let's say B is second. And so these are our first and second place winners. So we see that we have four times three ways to make a first and second person. Now, this is called a permutation. So we're permuting two objects from a set of four. We're picking a first and a second one. In other words, we're grabbing two members of a set, but the order in which we grab them matters. And so, this is denoted as P, it's usually like a P with a little n on the left and a K on the right. And this is choosing K objects from N objects, but the order in which we pick the K objects matters. And a formula for this is just n factorial 
divided by n minus k factorial. Because essentially we're arranging n factorial counts the number of ways to arrange a, b, c, and d. n minus k factorial represents the number of ways to represent or the number of ways to rearrange the objects that aren't our first and second winners. So when we divide these two, um, what we'll basically get is we're counting the the number of way or the number of things that will happen in the first two slots, but we're dividing by the number of ways can happen in these last n minus k spots. So, so we have n total objects, and we randomly rearrange them so that we have the first k here. And we're looking at how many ways can we have the first k. But we'll have some repetition. Let's say we had a, b, c, d, but we could also have a, b, d, c. We're overcounting here, we're overcounting the case a, b by 2, by a factor of n minus k factorial. So that's why we have to divide by n minus k factorial to get the number of permutations. Now commutation, com combinations are very similar to permutations except we choose k objects and the order doesn't matter. So a, b, choosing a, b is exactly the same as choosing b, a. In other words, we take the number of permutations, which we already have a formula for, and we divide by the number of ways to arrange our objects which is just k factorial. Because if we have k objects, there's k ways to rearrange them. So this is n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. This is also represented in usually two different ways. We could write a C, C for combination, with an N and a K, just like this one, where there's P for permutation. And the most common way you'll, you'll see it written is like an N and a K in parentheses, almost like a fraction, but there's no division sign. And this is written N choose K. So now, Let's say we wanted to rearrange the objects A, B, and B. Oh, that should be B. Now, our first guess would be to say that this is, you know, there's three objects, so it's three factorial, and it equals six. However, if we count it ourselves, there's A, B, B, or we could have B, A, B, or we could have B, B, A. So there's only three different, well I'll say spellings of the word A, B, B. So what went wrong with our factorial? Well what went wrong is that this B and this B are the same. So we have to correct for that. Basically if we treated them as distinct objects, let's say b1 and b2, then yes, there are three factorial ways to arrange a, b1, and b2. But then we can basically see that if we ignore the a, then you know we could have b1 and b2, or say here we could have b2 and b1. In other words, there's two ways to arrange them. 
which corresponds to the two ways, the two factorial ways to arrange two distinct objects. So instead we have 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial. We're also dividing by something else, and that is 1 factorial. Now the 1 factorial comes from the number of ways to arrange an A. It's important to think about this A because if we were trying to arrange the letters in the word A, B, B, A, then now we have two A's that are the same and we have two B's that are the same. So by similar logic, the answer should be 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Now, if we notice, this is just the same as our combination formula because here our, um, our terms are adding up to what we have in the top. We have 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, and that's because if we're only do dealing with two letters, then however many we have in A is the total minus however many we have in B. So in fact, if we have a if we have a letter with n total letters, and let's say there's only A and B. and there are k a's. Therefore, we must have n minus k b's. So the total number of ways to arrange uh, this word is n choose k. And so that is a nice application of the choose function. And there's also a, tr a, a nice way to represent the choose function. Instead of writing two, factor two different factorials in the denominator, we can notice that oftentimes um, we'll have n factorial, and so let's say this is n times n minus 1, dot, 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 times n minus k plus 1 times n minus k dot 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 times 2 times 1. Well, this part of n factorial is just n minus k factorial which we have in the denominator, so we can divide out by this term. And so we'll just be left with n times n minus 1 times n minus k plus 1 all over k factorial. And I guess I should correct this. This is now writing n choose k. And so this we can count is the first k integers less than or equal to n, and this is just k factorial. So for a concrete example, if we wanted to choose, if we wanted to count 8 choose 4, then we would write the first four integers, 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, divided by 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then we can just compute this, you know, canceling out numbers and stuff. So I think that's it for part one. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.